Hey guys, Doug here uh, from Unique Three Phase. Now this is not a video about uh, running three phase motors on single phase power. What we're doing is I had to level some floors, two, two areas in my shop building that we're not going to use for cars anymore and it has those big doors on the front and someone put V-shaped, when they poured the concrete they made a V-shape in the concrete that tapered from 20 feet in the middle of the building out to the edge so when you uh, pull your car in, the snow melts off it and it supposedly runs out the door. Well, we don't need that anymore. We're blocked off the doors. So, I, uh, I originally assumed that I was just going to use floor leveling compound. You go up to Home Depot, you buy it, bring it back, you mix it up, you pour it on the floor and it's magic stuff, it levels. But what happened was I noticed the price of it is really expensive. I mean, it's like... The first bag I bought at Home Depot was like $32 a bag. Then I noticed they had some cheaper, they, they, they discontinued that brand when I went back, and they had $27 bags. So as it, as it turned out, in the end, we used 80-pound bags of topping mix to do the whole job. And we used, I used 29 bags of that stuff. So I would have used 46 bags of the 50-pound bag stuff, the self-leveler, that comes out to be like $1,300. I would have spent $1,300 on self-leveling stuff plus the primer when we just went ahead and bought the sand mix, put it on there. So what's the big deal, you ask? Well, the big deal is the sand mix can't level the stuff out. The problem is, take a look at that. It's just lumpy and it's too thick. And when you screed it, it won't screed down to you know, a half inch or a quarter of an inch or something like that. It just pulls it off of the substrate. So we end up with a big lumpy mess like we have here. And that's about the best you can do. We tried mo mixing more and more water in with the sand mix. And on the other side of the garage, I did actually put another coat on. We thinned it down with like twice or three times the water. But then you're getting into a hazardous kind of thing where you just got a whole lot of water in the thing. You're not supposed to do that. So I was stuck at this level, and I still had to do a lot of filling, and I just didn't want to spend all that money on that uh, self-leveling compound, although it would seem like it's easy. But the problem is when I went on the Home Depot and the Lowe's websites and I read the reviews, all of them said that uh, it's very, very tricky. A lot of people were saying they used ice water, they use ice cubes, they keep the water in the freezer. And those people, or they'd use twice as much water in the self-leveling thing. And a whole lot of people reported they had major problems. The stuff hardened up in the pail, it hardened up on the floor, it didn't level, it didn't go on, it, got to, it was too thick. So that was kind of scary to me because I'm going to buy all this stuff and put it on here. And I was working alone. All the YouTube channels said, you've got to have people mixing, you've got to have people pouring, and you've got to have people spreading. So I didn't have that. So I was thinking about it, and then that's when I got the idea is why not just put the sand mix on dry and spread it around and then wet it. And so that's what you're going to see in the video. That's the whole thing I did, and it worked perfect. The floor is all in, and just, everything is great.
The only problem I had with the water was I was afraid of squirting the water and getting ruining the sheetrock on the other side of the building there. And I was also, you can't walk on this stuff. It's soft, you know. So I using that backpack sprayer, I aimed the water over there, but I didn't want to wreck the sheetrock. And I had used that blue masking tape to hold the sheet, to hold that plastic on. And I knew that was not going to do well. So the next day I came out and all of this stuff is hardened. Everything is great except for there was an area over by both the sheetrock things and that one door where this it was still powder. I mean, it's like, oh, OK, you know. So what I did was I just made sure I spread it out and made sure it was level. And then I rewatered it because now I could walk on the main thing. So I walked over there and I just did it with water. The whole thing you're trying to avoid is if you pour water on it, you're just going to wash this stuff out. The water has to be kind of put on gently. But with the backpack sprayer, I mean, I put on, I think, three or four or five gallons of water on the floor itself. And you can figure out how many bags of cement you have, how much water you need. And you can say, well, that's approximately right. But it has hardened up and it's hardened all the way through to the bottom. And uh, I'm, now I'm going to put the stuff on there and see how that does, the dry core. This was the first site I did. I did a uh, little bit on this I ran out of the topping mix so I just did that much just to see if this was feasible and it was going to work and it came out fine and it looks perfect to me uh, I'm so somewhat of a perfectionist and I try and look at every possible thing that could not be right with it and in some ways I wonder if I had a better screed that two by six you know, it just wasn't the best thing to be screening with something a little bit more sharper with a little bit better knife edge on it or a better edge on it. The two by six was kind of thick. Then also, if you noticed that I, I screeded it and it was smooth, then I went back with the metal thing and I went over the whole thing again because I liked the looks of it and it seemed to get some of the stuff out. But it did leave a little of the sand stuff on the top. You know, there's little grains of sand that are not... Uh, attached into the concrete so I kind of wondered about that I thought maybe if you had a good screed screeded it in there better I, I don't know about trying to float it I don't know if that would uh, be worth it or wor help it out or any but it's all fine because we're putting that dry core flooring on there it doesn't matter everything was working fine the whole thing looks really good you can see in this final picture we f did the whole shop and finished it up and one good thing was we saved the money we saved, we saved, what, $1,000 on the leveling stuff, right? That, and then we bought 135 sh uh, things of the dry core flooring. So by using this, we saved enough money to buy the dry core flooring. So when you really think about it, if you use the dry core flooring, it's going to cover up. Now, this picture here, this is that's what I tried to do with really reducing down the topping mix with water. I, I mixed it in pails. I used twice or three times as much water. It actually didn't come out that bad. It sure reduced the amount of stuff you needed in the final coat. But anyway, uh, what I was saying was we saved enough by not using the topping mix, the self-leveling. We saved enough on not using it to top the self-leveling expensive stuff to afford to buy the dry core flooring. So now we got the dry core flooring for free, really. So that worked out well. Here's a picture of the, the finished thing.